We have. And those little satellite boxes. We have. It's great to see you in person. It's an honor to be here. Thank uh, you. We've got kind of a change in the, just the last few minutes about some of these people who've come forward. So the New York Times says that it won't be at this point uh, reporting on the second woman who's come forward for journalistic reasons. And then in Montgomery County, they say that they're not going or not currently investigating claims of a woman ex-classmate who came forward with, you know, some cooperating information. She said they couldn't drill down on that. They say they're not investigating. What do you make of this? Well, I think it's it's like we see over and over again as character assassination. We saw this uh, with uh, Judge Rory Moore. You know, it was real big going up to the election. As soon as the election's over, you don't hear anything about it. Um, you know, these people have had ample time to come out in the last 30, 40 years, and there's not been any talk of this. Uh, if they are true, they should have come out earlier. Um, the investigation, you know, if they don't go to the second one, I think that's fine. Chairman, how complicated has it become with the hashtag MeToo movement for leaders on the Hill to look at these situations? I mean, I know everybody has an opinion about uh, whether they believe so and so or not, but the evidence is what it is. The Me Too movement, you know, if there's wrong done to anybody, you know, we need to go after that. But it's gotten so sterile up there. It's like right now, I couldn't compliment you on your hair or your 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 outfit you have on now. Or somebody would say, well, that was uh, a pretty presumptuous. And, uh, you know, it's gotten really sterile up there. Um, you know, people aren't, they're afraid to do their regular job during the course of a day. And that, of course, hurts the real victims who come out and want to be heard. And how important is it, do you think, that we hear from Dr. Ford at this juncture? Um, again, Dr. Ford should have come out when it happened, and she should have come out, you know, during that course. He's been a judge for I, I don't know how long, but there were ample opportunities to come out, and I think it's very uh, suspicious when they wait to the very end and, and bring up something from college days. You and I went to college. I can't remember what I did. Well, in I was in 15 at the time. She was she was a child not much older than my oldest child, but. Uh, I hear what you're saying just in terms of the, the political timing for this now. He has been a federal judge for a long time. Quite a while. And that's a very important job as well, that's if someone important. were to speak up. Sure. Thursday now has turned out to be a very interesting day for a whole lot of reasons. Will be. Because now you've got the president also set to sit down with his uh, deputy attorney general, Rod Rosenstein. And after the kind of rabbit chasing we did today with that story, all eyes on that. But this is a lifetime appointment with Judge Kavanaugh. What do you want to see happen on Thursday? What are some of the questions for both Kavanaugh and Ford that you want to see asked? I think on Kavanaugh, you know, is he going to interpret the law the way it was intended to be interpreted? Can he do that in his present capacity? And I think mm -hmm. his record has shown that he's been remarkable in what he's done. And so I think we should focus on those things. And I want to go to a little aside here. Okay. You know, in America, we've got so many problems. We've got a 21 plus trillion dollars in debt. We've got a rising China. We've got North Korea going on. And we can't get our legislative work done because we get drug into, I don't want to call it drama. If it was something that truly happened, there should be some um, closure to that. Mm -hmm. um, but we spend so much time working and spending time over here, we can't get the work done that we're up here to do in Congress. And I think at some point we need to set that aside and have that day in court, but yet don't focus or don't drop the ball on wow. what we should be focusing you on. You know who agrees with you are the American people who I think so. are, are facing a new enrollment period for their health care. Right. And, you know, the president has said he'd like to hit that issue one more time. Oh, it needs to be. Right. And the Democrats say, well, they have some ideas going into the midterms. Uh, they don't hold the mantle now, so uh, people just want their problem solved. Well, and, you know, President Trump has done a remarkable job on, we, we've got a bill that's going to be hopefully signed into law this week. It's called the BUILD Act. It reforms foreign aid. And this is something that the president's wrapped his arm around both the House and the Senate, Republicans and Democrats. It's a strong bipartisan bill that will change and improve our foreign aid so that we can move countries from aid to trade as quick as we can. And the president's done a, a great job on leadership on that. That's the kind of stuff we can get done if we can focus on that. But if we're distracted, and I don't want to call them sideshow or circuses, no. but they kind of look that way to the American public. The American public, like you said, wants us to come in, get the job done that we were elected to do, and run the country. Bill Dack, thank you for bringing us some details on that. I Chairman, thought I'd give you a segue. No, we like that. <laughs> we like extra information that counts with the people. Yeah. Chairman, thank you very much yes, from the great state of Florida right here in New York. Good the to see you. Great state of Florida. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, we'll have much more on Rosenstein's future with our panel. Power Panel next. Stay close.